Veterans Can Code, or VCC, Veterans. VCC can help veterans learn coding fundamentals. Transitioning Veterans, VCC can open doors to new career prospects for transitioning veterans. Veterans with an established interest in coding, VCC provides veterans with platforms to present their coding skills and an opportunity to build their portfolios.
It's a lot easier when you color in the nines to see, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So visuals, uh, data visualization is one of these powerful tools that when you can combine different elements like size, shape, and color, the brain can recognize that much, much faster than any other way of consuming information. So sight is our fastest sense, 60,000 times faster than any other sense. That's why when you're driving down the street and you see stoplights, you immediately know, your brain immediately knows, okay, great, red, yellow, green, I know where, what I'm doing, what I need to do. Um, it's a lot faster than reading, stop, slow down, go. Um, <laughs> so again, our, our brains are very quick at interpreting changes in size. So you scan really quick, that pops out in the middle. Orientation, there's one that's oriented differently, and color. We just are quick to pick up those patterns, and it's kind of an evolutionary trait. You know, you had to survive a long time ago. You had to know uh, what was dangerous. Um, and that's why we have one of our fastest senses, and why data visualization has become so popular is because it's easy to interpret. It's easy to reveal trends and patterns. It's accessible to more audiences. So sometimes, um, in the field that I'm in, a lot of the data is kind of shared through reports and tables that are super, super dense, no one ever reads them. But if you can combine all the key pieces of that report into just a one-page kind of infographic, it's a lot more accessible to a lot more people, a lot more enjoyable to a lot of people. Um, and it provides actionable intelligence. So a lot of data visualizations are meant to provide you with information that you can act on. So if you're a doctor and you see kind of an imaging scan, where do I need to go? Where's cancer in this person's body? Or if you're a congressman and you need to know, okay, where do I need to put my resources for this community? That information has to be really accessible, and that's why data visualization has become so popular. So this is a little bit of a nerdy one, um, but has anybody heard of Ansgo's Quartet before? No? Okay, I love this pattern. Um, so this is the like economist, economist statistician in me. You have four data sets. So these four data sets appear here. These data sets have identical descriptive statistics. So that means things like mean, median, standard deviation, they're identical. Even though, you know, if you were a programmer like I am and you said, okay, I'm just gonna run it, what's my mean, what's my median, what's my mode, you get the same results. But if you visualize the information, each dot representing one of those data points, the information actually looks really, really different. So this is one of the important reasons why we visualize information is we have to understand the data and the components of our data and not just take summary statistics as our main point of information. So you might be thinking, why does this matter for me at all? Um, this is a, another quote from Tableau, but it's talking about, I think it's a really good point, is that this Data visualization is so popular now, regardless of the field that you're in, it's important to understand and know the components of data visualization. So it's all about making data more understandable. And given the world we live in today and the volume of data, we're in the big data world now. There's so much data that needs to be consumed and made easily understandable that skill sets are changing to accommodate a data-driven world and it's really important for professionals to be able to use data to both make decisions and be able to tell stories with that data to inform your stakeholders and to tell the kind of who, what, when, where, why happen. So this is just kind of a high-level graphic of what data visualization is. It's a multidisciplinary field. I was trained in public policy. I went back to grad school to become a data scientist. Um, and now I've kind of landed in the sweet spot of data visualization that combines graphic design, it combines data science, UX, which is kind of user experience. A lot of the work that I do is built around interactive visualizations, and I have to understand how you, Christina, reacts to something I build. So she, I might see it one way, I'm like, oh, this is super easy to interpret. She might look at it and go, I have no idea what to click on or what to look at or what. So it's all about user experience, which focuses a lot on human perception and interpretation of information. It's also about communication. What's the story that you're trying to tell? Um, and then data management. Um, data visualizations are not good unless you have good data. 
Uh, this is a little hard to view with the lights, but this talks about the process for data visualization. So again, coming from a programming background, you kind of start with your data, this raw data. You have to do all this analysis on it. You have to process that data, filter and clean to figure out the meaning of what you, the story you want to convey, convey. And then you kind of move into the graphics space. What, what are the visuals I need to tell my story? You draw it out, and then you kind of end up with your final visualization. And it's a super iterative process. Um, there's all kinds of techniques around this. Um, but this is kind of the general flow and pattern. It's not a quick process. It takes a long time. Uh, again, the Washington Post has some of the best visualizations out there. Uh, and they'll, if you talk to anybody there, they'll tell you about the lengthy process they go through for building these visualizations. It's not just like, oh yeah, great, here's my data, here's the visualization. It's a very iterative process. Okay, so high level dashboard design in Tableau. Um, again, dashboarding is a little different from infographics. Dashboardings, dashboards are often interactive and live, real time data and information, which is just like a dashboard of a car. Um, one of my clients recently was looking at a dashboard she built, and she was like, you know, when I'm looking at the dashboard on my car, all I want to know is, am I going to get a speeding ticket? <laughs> and I know right away whether I am or not. And she's like, looking at this data, she's like, that's perfect, because I know right away how my program's performing. Uh, so that's the whole point of dashboard design. Um, this is super popular across all fields now. I typically work with government clients, but a lot of different uh, businesses, everybody's creating dashboards today. They want to know what their profit is. They want to know how participants in their program are doing. Uh, and all of them are kind of sitting around this idea of dashboards. Tableau is um, one of the leading visual business intelligence softwares on the market today. The other one is called Microsoft BI. It's a really good one. Click is another one. Salesforce, that's mentioned there, just bought Tableau. Uh, but this is called the Gartner Magic Quadrant. They produce it every year on the best business intelligence uh, software out there. Microsoft BI actually just beat Tableau this year, which was like a big uproar <laughs> in the data visualization space. Um, but Tableau is still one of the leading ones. They have like 20% of the market. Um, and it's super popular among government clients. Uh, and I think it's one of the most easy to learn data visualization tools. You can kind of work with it right out of the box and don't need a lot of programming experience to be able to create really beautiful interactive visualizations. Uh, but that being said, Tableau does not equal Excel. A lot of folks that get into data visualization are like, I'm a pro at Excel, I'm gonna be a pro at Tableau. But there's all these different skill sets that are involved with building and designing dashboards uh, that are kind of different from your more tabular way of thinking like a lot of programmers typically do uh, in Excel, myself included. So when you think about Excel, SAS, R, Python, D3 even, which is a kind of advanced data visualization software, these all do static tabular information. Uh, but Tableau, BI, Click, it's all about interactivity, the flow of data, and it's not about just recreating a table. It's really trying to think how can I recreate these large volume of data and in a very aggregated, high level of way for it to be really easy for folks to consume. So I'm going to just fly through this and see if there's any questions. Um, if you haven't worked with Tableau before and you're really interested and excited, there's a free 14-day trial that can help get you started. Um, I think with any kind of programming language, <laughs> one of the hardest things to getting started is getting started. So how do I load data into my program? I think that's one of the hardest things for learning any kind of new programming language is just the getting started piece. Tableau, again, makes it super easy to do that. You can open up all kinds of files and link to all different kinds of databases really quickly. So the minute you open Tableau, you see this. You click on, oh, I want to upload a Microsoft Excel file. You do that. It fills, fills in the kind of, takes a look at your data at a high level. This looks just like an Excel spreadsheet right now. If you pulled up your Excel spreadsheet, you would see the order ID, order date, ship date, ship mode, all the exact same information. And then you'll click on that where it says go to worksheet. Like it's prompting you, it's helping you out. Uh, go to worksheet, you kind of get started with your visualizations. 
All of the data variables that you have are very easily filtered. Tableau is super smart. It knows things like, okay, you're dealing, dealing with categorical data up here, um, or just character data. It knows you have geographic data, and then you have a lot of number data down here. You also have hierarchies in your data. Tableau is very intelligent when looking at your data to know whether you have countries, regions, zip codes, uh, or even continents to look at. Um, this is called a marks curve, where you add and create all the visualizations, like make them look really beautiful, add filters, pages, animation, all of that. And then, again, that is really hard to see, but there's this very easy, handy tool called Show Me that says, what do you want to do? Do you want to build a map? Do you want to build a new bar chart? Do you want to do a scatter plot? Um, you click on that, bring in your data, and in two seconds, you have just bar charts. It's done. so quick, so easy. You drag over your, um, they're called pills. Each of these are called little pills. If you pull them, it's going look like a pill. Um, pull that information over, create your visualizations. Much easier than Excel. Um, but one of the key things that Tableau does is it creates these hierarchies in the data, like category and segment up there, so that it's very easy to create chunks of bar charts and information very quickly. So that was high level. I'm going to talk through the three dashboard types real quick. So if you do get into dashboarding, or you are someone who is asking for a dashboard, you know what to be asking for. So there's three types of dashboards. There's operational and analytical and strategic. Operational are really granular and program specific. So if you were running a program and you had participants that you were working with, you would need an operational dashboard. If you are an analyst, you would need an analytical dashboard that allows you to drill down to the kind of the nitty gritty, look at things over time, um, find the patterns, find the problems in your data. Or if you're um, kind of senior management or you're the CEO of the company, you need a strategic dashboard. Super goal oriented, saying, hey, how am I doing? Gary needs a strategic dashboard that says, hey, how am I doing on this real estate um, development project? Where, where is the money going? What's going on? Are we on budget, on task? So this is an example of an operational dashboard. If you ever need ideas for dashboards, Tableau Public is an amazing place to go. I particularly like this company called Decisive Data. They have beautiful visualizations that are all built in Tableau. Um, but this is an operational dashboard. So this is someone running a university basketball court, and they need to know how they did it. It's all the nitty gritty of the games, and game attendance, and how many tickets were sold. But it allows you to kind of click through each of those games and see performance. It's a little more operational focus. This is analytical. This allows you to kind of filter by region, see trends over time. It's a lot more data. Um, it's a lot more data that allows you to kind of just drill down a little more too. Similarly, this is another analytic dashboard as well. Again, lots of information they're throwing at you. You spend time with an analytical dashboard. You don't immediately kind of get all the information you need. You kind of have to look at it closely. Um, versus a strategic dashboard, which is super high level. You can drill down if you want to. You know where your problem areas are. That is what a strategic dashboard is. Very, very high level. It's kind of like a scorecard approach of red light, green light, yellow light on your performance. So again, if you want to get started in Tableau, you need, to, you need help and support. Tableau offers tons of free online trainings. It's a great resource to go to. Um, I really enjoy Tableau because it has such a huge user community. So if you're interested in learning about it, you know, there's, there's a lot of supports online. And Tableau Public, if you're just interested in data visualization in general and trying to understand like what's going on in this space, Tableau Public posts a data viz of the day. It highlights all of these beautiful visualizations that people are creating. They're amazing. If you're into like Formula One, they do beautiful Formula One uh, data visualizations. They do data visualizations on every kind of industry. But it's just a great space to go and find information or ideas or drill down on super specific topics. Um, with that being said, I flew through that. Um, but are there any questions or kind of anything anybody wants to talk about? If um, not, yeah. Have you ever have you seen any? have low programs that are geared towards veterans or people that are 
um, super novice, like I, I want to learn, but yeah. I don't know So I'm really glad you asked. I know someone at Tableau who has a specific interest in working with veterans. I should put you in touch with her. She's amazing, and she actually runs their like business arm, but has super intense passion for veterans and runs different programs for them. Um, I, I'm similarly, I really like working with data for military and veterans, and I work for the Defense Advisory Council on Women in the Services, and we just used a Tableau visualization. Um, actually, I should pull it up, but we use Tableau to communicate diversity in, um, in the military across all you know, enlisted officers, across um, race, ethnicity, and gender and to kind of make recommendations to the Secretary of Defense, and they made a recommendation to the Secretary of Defense based off of the visualization, which was really cool. Um, and then we're hoping, so have you heard of CHEPS? It's the Patient Experience Survey for VA hospitals yes. and facilities. Yes. So I'm working on that project right now, and I'm hoping, yeah, it's <laughs> intense, yeah. Um, it's intense. Uh, and but I really I'm fascinated by it, and I'm hoping that there can be more dashboards that help them track things more regularly versus these one-time kind of you know where they go in and do the survey, but really assessing on a more routine basis how's performance, how's patient experience going, things like that. But in terms of like an, a veterans like getting involved with Tableau themselves, I really should put yeah, you in touch. Yeah, yeah. No, they they have a they have a really good um, kind of. CSR arm at Tableau that I think focuses a lot on different social uh, issues. I'd also like to talk to you later about what you're doing out there with the DOD and yeah. the intersection where uh, you know, women, in, women in coding, women in, in Tableau, women in, in technology in general. Yeah, no, I would love to talk about it, and I can, I'm sure, link to the visualization that we did for DOD too, or VA actually. Cool. Yeah. Data is cleaning the data and figuring out where there's issues, what you need to take out, what you might need to impute, what you might need to like synthetically duplicate. Um, that, I feel like we can talk about for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you're thinking about, I'm creating data to put it in a dashboard to make it real time, kind of again to Gary's question of like, I have to do this every six months or something. You want to create processes in place that are going to be easy to replicate. So what that means is not manually coding or changing values in your data, but writing a program or having Tableau. Every time you see this value appear in my data, code it is missing. Every time you see this data value appear, there's a spelling mistake in it. Tableau, you can just say every time you see it, it's actually this. Or maybe some name change or something like that. You have to be thinking about um, reducing the number of manual steps in the process is a big piece of the data management. Like you don't want to have to keep, because you're going to do it again. You don't want to have to keep duplicating and redoing and all that in the process. That's pretty at a high level. Is that kind of what you were getting mm -hmm. at? Yes. <laughs> Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Great. Cool. Yeah. Think I think I'm just cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this was, this was an infographic that we created about diversity in the military between 2008 and 2018. It goes by each branch, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Coast Guard, and provides high-level statistics on kind of things that are going well and the things that are not going very well. We did this initially, and they're like, cool, but we want the really nitty-gritty details of it. And they gave us this spreadsheet that was massive. It was 10 years of data for every rank um, across every branch, uh, of course, every it was, it was a ton of information, and we said, okay, we got to make that a little more accessible for folks. Um, so we ended up creating. So this is what the recommendations were built off of, and I can't see it super well. Um, but we ended up creating these heat map tables uh, for. This is actually 16 pages long, but it actually summarized all of the information for all of the branches in the military. And what the numbers mean is how many um, women were enlisted at the top and the percentage out of um, all individuals in the services. And then, so, oh, that's perfect. So what you can see is when the number is denser, darker, it's a positive thing. And then when it's light, it's not. So you can see Hispanic female enlisted personnel, how light that color is across all the services. 
I'll scroll down, but it's when you look at these sheets, it was really easy for folks, rather than looking at these pages and pages of tables with tons of rows of data, this is a much easier way for them to quickly scan the data to see where there are gaps and issues. So I'll just scroll through, but here's one on racial minorities. Um, but all of this is publicly available online if you're curious about looking into this a little more. Um, warrant officers, you can see like zero. Um, but yeah, it is, it was a, this was a pretty, really fascinating one to work on. But then there's also positive stories in this too. Um, when you get to officers, there's some really positive stories of female, like here, I think this is a really interesting one. So this is in the Army. Um, so female enlisted personnel uh, by rank, and you can see when you get those higher ranks, E7, E8, and E9, there's actually a pretty good uh, number of female enlisted personnel out of total, so the number denominator here is total female in the Army, which is pretty exciting to kind of look at. But yeah, I'll stop scrolling through this because they all look the same, I mean, they don't all look the same, but you can kind of get the general <laughs> sense of what we were doing. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty, uh, Pretty fun project. We do a lot of work with them. We write their annual um, annual report. Okay. Sorry if it's I know from the programmer side of things. Yeah. Right? Just adding these data sets in and making yeah. it. What does it look like for communication of errors? Is it checking? Like, hey, you got it's a mini to mini join. You're trying to throw together. Yeah. Like so that. yeah, that's perfect, and that's exactly right. The joins that you're creating. Um, it. So that is kind of getting to Gary's question earlier too, like quality of the data too. You do have to know your data, and you have to know <laughs> how joins are, like that's more like SQL. Um, yeah. Thinking about the joins that you're creating in your databases are pretty important. Um, but yeah, yeah, exactly, garbage in, garbage out. However, if you know your data, I actually think visualizing it is a really easy way to see you have a problem in your data. Because sometimes it's hard when you have you know, 50,000 rows of data, it's hard to be like, where's my error? If, you know, but if you can just plot that data, it's a lot easier to see like, oh wow, I have like really insane outliers in my data where I'm missing everything for this county, zip code, something like that. So, I, I'm a big believer in visualizing data clearly uh, <laughs> because I think it's accessible for a lot more people. It's easier for people to engage with Tables are not exciting. Um, they're not. <laughs> Even adding color to a table is a little more exciting. Um, I actually, Avi, can I try to Google something real quick? Go ahead. Um, I was going to show you the visualization we created for um, DACOH, which is the advisory council. Veterans Can Code, or VCC. Veterans. VCC can help veterans learn coding fundamentals. Transitioning Veterans. VCC can open doors to new career prospects for transitioning veterans. Veterans with an established interest in coding. VCC provides veterans with platforms to present their coding skills and an opportunity to build their portfolios.